I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Until you start calling yesterday or let us assume it was last week actually we talked about knowledge in the Quran and we stated some of the evidences of the importance of knowledge and that knowledge when referred to in the Quran and in Sunnah it refers to the, the knowledge of the Quran of the tafsir of the Sunnah of the interpretation of the hadith of the Prophet of the fundamentals of fiqh of fiqh itself so it's anything that relates to Islamic sciences providing that the intention is for the sake of Allah and this is what souls are purified by when your intention is for the sake of Allah and you learn and acquire knowledge that are related to the Quran and Sunnah you've got it made however there is another type of knowledge that is also divided into two types one type that is permissible and this type is the general types of knowledge we know of such as medicine engineering physics, chemistry, uh, mathematics, etc. If the intention is for the sake of Allah, in the sense that a person is studying it and is teaching it and is applying it in his life so that he would elevate the Muslims and he would bring benefit to Islam, then he is rewarded for that. And he is considered to be in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not as the Islamic sciences, but he will be rewarded as long as his intention is for the sake of Allah. But what about if he's not doing this for the sake of Allah? He's doing it for a promotion. He's doing it for um, a better source of income to, le to elevate his uh, standard of living. In this case, it becomes permissible, but he's not rewarded and it's not a sin. However, there is a second type of such knowledge which is considered to be forbidden and this is the knowledge of astrology the knowledge that claims stars to have an effect on our lives so th those who follow the zodiacs and their signs and uh, uh, the stars and they believe that it has an impact on their lives of course this is an act of blasphemy the belief of it and it definitely is an act of blasphemy when a person learns it. So this, is, this type is forbidden. If you learn how to uh, do or deal with uh, black magic and sorcery, this is also forbidden. Though it's science, though it's knowledge, but it is the type of forbidden knowledge. Also, also uh, uh, learning, um, acting and... Uh, singing and going to such arts, this is forbidden in Islam. Brother Hakim or Abdul Hakim from Nigeria. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Um, we have a peculiar situation in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, interest in Islam is forbidden. But uh, we have a scenario where uh, government will be building houses and government will give those houses for to civil servants or other individuals as a price with interest. Okay. We don't have any alternative except you don't take at all. And if you don't take, there are more than enough Christians in Nigeria that will take such buildings. What do we do in such instances? Okay, I will answer your question, inshallah. Brother Abdul Hakim is talking about an issue in his country, Nigeria, 
And he's saying that the government offers loans to those who would like to build houses, but it is interest based. And he's saying that if we decline taking such loans, the Christians would do it. So what is the situation? What is the answer? And the answer is very simple. Allah Azza wa Jal made giving interest one of the major sins in Islam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, may Allah curse those who take interest. And that is the government or the bank. And those who give interest, and that is you. And those who write it or document it down, and these are usually the accountants or the people who register such uh, debts in records, a data entry or whatever. And those who witness it, the two witnesses who have had witnessed such a transaction, all the Prophet says, all of them are in the same degree of sin. So it is not permissible for you to accept such a loan. Now what the consequences may be, this is not your problem. Whether it's Christians who got a benefit of it or it's the Jews or anyone, so be it. The most important thing for me as a Muslim to be saved on the day of judgment so that I would not be questioned by Allah Azza wa Jal, why did you take or why did you give interest over the loan? Well, you know it's riba and it's haram. If I justify this in front of Allah by saying, oh Allah, because I'm afraid that the Christians would have taken it, Allah would tell me then, what's your problem? Let them take it, they're kuffar, they're disbelievers. So even if they take it, they're gonna be held accountable on the day of judgment. If the government is offering you free wine bottles or champagne for the new years, and if you decline taking it, the Christians would take it. So would any proper Muslim say that, well, in this case, might as well take it so that they would not benefit of it? Definitely not. So I'm afraid that you have to try to encourage Islamic financing so that this would take place, inshallah, in your country. You have a majority of Muslims, you have a lot of Muslims, and if they collaborate, if they start, even businessmen, Muslim businessmen should get together and should try to form an Islamic bank with an Islamic board, Sharia board, that would justify their transactions in accordance with the Quran and Sunnah. And maybe then the government would start to deal with such banks and support these uh, dealings in an Islamic fashion and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Coming back to um, the issue, I believe that last week another sister from Nigeria called but it was time to conclude the program so I did not get uh, time to answer her question and if I recall correctly her question was regarding a woman who is being continuously bearing children, breastfeeding, and then the cycle goes on and on. So for five, six years, she did not fast Ramadan. So she's asking, what is the ruling on that? And the answer is that she, as long, alhamdulillah, that she's able to make up for uh, these days later on, even after a year, even after a few years, if this is the case, alhamdulillah, she is obliged, she must wait until she is free from any obstacles and then she has to make up for the missed Ramadans even if it was five years or ten years. Uh, Brother Muhammad Noor din from Nigeria. Well, we lost him. I hope he calls back again. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal has told us how to identify proper knowledge. When he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ It is only those who have knowledge among his slaves, among his servants, that fear Allah. So if we would like to identify who fears Allah from those who do not fear Allah, we have to look at the knowledge that they possess. And if their knowledge leads to the fear of Allah, then this is the proper knowledge. And they're considered to be 
knowledgeable. If we look at people with this definition, we will be able, inshallah, to identify who are those of knowledge. Meaning, with this ayah, that it is only those who have knowledge among his slaves that fear Allah, by this ayah, if I look at a shepherd, if I look at a farmer, if I look at someone who works in a job that does not appeal to me, a janitor, for example, if I look, if I look at such a person and I find him practicing, though he's illiterate, I find him praying in the first row in the masjid, I find him fasting, I'm, I find him avoiding forbidden things, this person is a scholar in my, eye, in my eyes, and he's a person of knowledge in the, by the definition of the Qur'an. We have Um Liana from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have two questions. Okay. What, one is, what is the ruling regarding guide my prayer? Regarding? Guide my prayer. I didn't understand it. Guide my prayer. I, I, I'm unable to understand your question. Guy? Praying for a person who's buried, who's prayed and buried back in a homeland. Oh, so burying someone dead in his homeland. Yeah, yeah and they have prayed there also. Can we pray from here again? Okay, so you're asking about Salat al-Ghaib, yeah, which yeah, is a yeah. prayer okay. of a person who's not present. Yeah. Okay, and the second yeah. question? And my second question is, what is the ruling regarding calling pet names? Like, uh, my daughter, I call her names, like, her name is Liana, but I, I call her Linu Lia, even though I don't know the, whether it has a meaning or not. Is it, permit, is it permissible? Calling your mother in a different name than her name? No, calling my daughter. You're calling your daughter in an, a different name than hers? Yeah, yeah. In, in the sense of, you know, changing the name, like the Prophet used to call Aisha, he used to call her Aish, or he used to call her al Humaira. So is this uh, is... Like that, uh, and my name, my daughter's name is Liana, I call her Lia, Linno, okay. like that. Okay, I got your question, inshallah. Okay, uh, um, Sister Um Liana is asking about the ruling of what is known as Salat al-Ghaib, which is praying funeral prayer over a person who died but his body is not in front of us. And the origin of this is the hadith when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in the Sahih as narrated by Jabir and Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father and also other uh, uh, companions. When the Prophet Islam gave them the news that a Najashi died today and he took them to al baqir to a place outside of the Masjid and he made them in rows in three rows and he led them in prayer Salatul Janazah or the funeral prayer which you all know of so scholars differed on the ruling on praying over Someone who died, but his body is not present Abu Hanifa and Imam Malik their school of thought forbid this completely Al Imam Shafi'i May Allah have mercy on uh, uh, their souls, all of them. He said that this is permissible. And Imam Ahmad, may Allah have mercy on his soul, said that it is permissible only for those who have impact, a positive impact over Islam. It is not permissible to offer it for anyone. So my cousin died a couple of weeks ago and in the masjid I go to the Imam and say, let's offer Salat uh, uh, al-Janazah, funeral prayer. He says, who, who for? He said, I said, my cousin, he died in so-and-so country. So he offers this. No, this is not the case. And unfortunately, it has escalated. Some yani, innovators pray every single night funeral prayer. And they offer it for anyone who had, pray, who had died anywhere in the world, those whom we know and those whom we do not know. And of course, this is an innovation. The Prophet ﷺ, and you have to be careful, did not offer funeral prayer over people who died among his companions. So, for example, he did not offer funeral prayer 
for those who have uh, uh, been martyred in Mu'tah, such as Zayd ibn Haritha, uh, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, and Abdullah ibn Rawaha. Though there is a dispute among scholars whether to offer funeral prayer over the deceased or not, uh, who have, who have uh, been martyred. So uh, the most authentic opinion, I will get to that insha'Allah, after we get Salim from Nigeria. Yes, Brother Salim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to ask one question. Okay. But I believe that Islam is complete. I believe that Islam is complete. Uh, Brother Salim, listen, listen to me. Talk, talk to me through the phone. Do not talk to, do not listen to me from the TV. Turn down the volume of the TV. Okay, yeah, I believe that Islam is complete. Okay. Therefore, it encompasses all the knowledge, and you can get the reward based on the intention that you have. Prefer yourself looking for that knowledge, as you said before. Okay. If your intention in any, any other field of knowledge, that your intention is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get the reward of it. And if it is contrary, it may happen differently. But my, what I need clarification is that, for instance, if I'm a scientist, I want I, I study this science field in order to assist my country. To assist my fellow Muslims in the world. Therefore, for instance, in course of this course, I found myself faulty in another in my country. What is going to be my faith in the hereafter? Okay, I will answer your question, inshallah. Uh, Sister Bala, or, or Brother Bla Bala, excuse me, Brother Bala from Nigeria? Okay, he's gone. Okay, go going back to Omliana's question. So this is what the four schools of thought say. Now, if you go back to the seat of the Prophet, he offered only this funeral prayer over the Najashi. And the Najashi is the title of anyone who rules Abyssinia, like Caesar, like uh, 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 those who um, rule the Roman Empire would all usually be called Caesars. So a Najashi's name was Asmaha. And when he passed away, the Prophet offered the prayer, but he never offered the prayer on a person who was not there at all. He used to go to the graveyard if he missed the funeral prayer or someone was buried before him being notified. He would go to the grave itself and he would offer funeral prayer as he did with the black woman who used to clean the masjid. Therefore, the most authentic opinion is, that we do not offer funeral prayer over someone who's not there, except if we, knew, if we know that he was buried and no Muslim has offered funeral prayer, like Asmaha, like an Najashi. An Najashi, when he was in Abyssinia, he had no Muslims around him, so they buried him as they bury the dead people, but the, uh, the funeral prayer, as per the Islamic Sharia, ah, was not performed uh, over him. And that is why the Prophet Hassan offered it. And to strengthen this opinion, when Abu Bakr died, he was only prayed the funeral prayer over him by the people who attended his funeral. People in Damascus, people in Egypt, people all over the Muslim world, not even in Mecca. They did not offer funeral prayer for Abu Bakr, for Umar, for Uthman, or for Ali. May Allah be pleased with them when they died, though they had the greatest impact over the Muslim uh, Ummah. As for your second question, um, when you play with your daughter or with your son and you give them names out of love and, and, and mercy and care, this is permissible. So if your daughter is Liana and you call, her, you call her Lulu or Looney or whatever, not Looney as in crazy, but Looney, uh, yes, this is uh, uh, permissible and there is nothing wrong in that at all. As for Brother Salim, Brother Salim most likely is, uh, if I understood his question correctly, he is complaining about the distinction and the difference between being a knowledgeable person in Islamic sciences 
and being a knowledgeable person with good intention in worldly matters or, or, or worldly sciences such as me medicine, engineering, etc. Okay, I will, I, will, I will get inshallah to Brother Salim's question. We have a caller from Nigeria and um, I don't know the name, so Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, Sheikh. It's Sister Bikis from Nigeria. Yes, sister. What can I do for you? Uh, uh, Sheikh, I'd like to ask. Um, I'd like to know the ruling of the ulama concerning taking pictures. You would like to know the meaning of the ruling of the ulama concerning the fatwa concerning taking pictures. Taking pictures. Yes. Okay. Sheikh. Okay. Yes. I will. I will, I will answer your question, inshallah. Any more questions? Uh, uh, no, no more questions. Thank you. Okay. Brother Abdul Aziz from Nigeria. Yes, Brother Abdul Aziz. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Please, um, I'm, I just want to let, let me declare about. Okay about interest in Islam. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, in terms of mortgaging, if, if, if government should give you mortgaging, maybe you pay, for example, maybe 20 years, but they will add their own... Okay. Maybe, maybe an entity pay 100,000, maybe yeah, they will say you should pay 120,000 within 20 years. So how, uh, how is this situation going to be held? I will answer your question, inshallah. Okay, uh, as for Brother Salim, his question was, to my understanding, is who is better on the Day of Judgment? And definitely those who have good intention will surpass, will exceed, will top those who do not have good intention. But if they both have good intention, those who studied Islamic uh, uh, knowledge of the Quran, of the Sunnah, of the Fiqh, and they have good intention in doing so, and another person who does not have the same knowledge, who, he's a Muslim, he has the highest grades in PhD, or uh, he's a professor in medicine, or in engineering, or in uh, chemistry or physics, with good intention, if both of them have the same good intention, then those with the Islamic knowledge are in a higher position. Because everything that comes in the Quran that praises knowledge, this is referring to the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. It is referring to the knowledge that purifies the soul. And definitely when you study medicine or you study physics, though you want to benefit the people, it is not as the, 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 the studying of the Quran and of the Sunnah. Okay, we have Kargan from Sweden, or Karwin. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sheikh, I just wonder how uh, can you give some advice? How I can speak knowledge, inshallah? How can you? I speak knowledge. How should I seek knowledge? How to, seek, how, how to seek knowledge? Yes. Okay, I will answer your question, inshallah. Now, going back to the sister that called from Nigeria regarding uh, the ruling of ulama over photography, taking pictures. Now, we have to know something for sure, that they all agree that drawing a picture, whether it's two-dimensional or making a statue, which is three-dimensional, this is completely forbidden. There's no dispute among real scholars because the Prophet has highlighted this and made it one of the major sins in Islam. That is simulating or imitating Allah's creation. And by doing this, you are actually trying to do something that only Allah Azza wa Jal can do. And the, those who draw pictures or make sculptures, they will be punished severely in their graves until of the Day of Judgment. And uh, and on the Day of Judgment, they will uh, be punished severely because of that. And Allah Azza wa Jal 
in some hadiths would put life in what they have created and it will torture them. And in other hadith, they will be instructed or asked to create something and they would not even create a piece of grain. So it is one of the major sins. Now regarding the taking pictures, it's an issue of dispute among scholars. But before taking your, um, we have uh, Maryam from Nigeria. Yes, yes. Salaam alaikum. Salaam wa rahmatullah. Please, I want to know about this du'a, this uh, du'a mashbul, and that is my one first question, and the second one is... Uh, no, I did not get I your first, I, I didn't get your first question. The I didn't get your first question. You want to know about? Oh, I want to know about this du'a, du'a, du'a mashbul. Du'a? What is this du'a? Du'a, du'a mashbul, yes. It's called du'a mashhur? Yeah. Yes, I want to know about this du'a mashlu. Okay, and the second question? Then the second question, yes, I want to know the difference between sabli and ba'adi. You want to know? The difference between qabli and ba'adi. Okay, the uh, difference between qabli and ba'adi. And okay, ba okay. Yes. I, I will answer your question, inshallah. Brother Muhammad from Nigeria. Brother Muhammad. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Listen to me from the phone. I want you to shed more light of the. on jealousy. Jealousy among Muslims. Jealousy. You're, yes. you're, okay. Among the Muslims or, or among the husband and wife? So among the Muslims, generally. Among the Muslims. Okay. I will answer your question, inshallah. Uh, I believe we have Brother Muhammad from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, how are you, Sheikh? Wa alaikum, bro. Uh, thank you very much for your so good program, sir. Zakallah khair. Uh, uh, I have one question. Okay. Is there a difference uh, between the prayers of men and women in Islam? Okay. Be because uh, most of the people have the saying that Abu Hanifa's ways of prayer, Rahmatullah's uh, prayer of way is correct, and others are not correct. Some something like this, you know. Uh, I will uh, answer your question, inshallah. Any uh, more okay. questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome, bro. Thank you, salam. I believe that we will try to answer the questions. We will not take any calls until, inshallah, we finish uh, most of them. So, regarding pictures, scholars have different opinions. The majority say that this is not permissible because it's a picture. And the hadith of the Prophet, he said that, May Allah Azza wa Jal curse those who take pictures, surah. So, they said that this is the same meaning of the word, but those who differed with them said yes but photography was not at the time of the prophet and when you take a picture a photograph it's different than when you draw even if you look at the mona lisa for example by da vinci if you look at it it's a drawing but if you take a picture of the same woman of course you're not supposed to look at it but this is not the point i'm talking about the difference between what a person drew and what the actual person looks like the actual uh, photograph is not a simulation of Allah's creation. This is Allah's creation. So if I look in myself at the mirror, this is me. I'm not going to look at the mirror and say, MashaAllah, this guy looks exactly like me, but it's not me. This is me. And likewise, if I sign my uh, uh, check and someone photocopies it, I don't have balance in my bank account, but regardless. And he shows me the original and the Xerox copy. I would say that this is my signature, though it's a Xerox copy, because it's identical. So scholars who say that it is permissible to take photographs, they say that it is recommended not to do so unless there is a need. But it is not considered to be what the Prophet has cursed. And they gave few um, guidelines. For example, they say that you cannot hang them on the wall. You cannot take pictures of grown-up adult women. So if you have your daughter who is 15 years of age or 14 years of age, 
you don't take her picture because even if no one is going to see it except you, again, it is forbidden to take a picture because there is a possibility that people would look at it. And you, can, you may not keep pictures of deceased people, people who had died, because then this might lead to something that is more greater than uh, taking pictures uh, by itself. And this is what I believe in. We have a short break. Stay tuned, and inshallah, we'll be right back. Today, Arabic is considered as very important, very significant language. How can we produce the sound, the state of voicing, place of articulation, the manner of articulation? So in Arabic, the words which are written are pronounced. We will learn how to write and pronounce Arabic letters correctly in depth. Explanation, via board and presentation, with many other important factors. And we have today more than 300 million people speak Arabic language. Not only in the Middle East, but you can find a lot of people speak Arabic language in Asia, Europe, North America, and in South America. What are you waiting for? Grab your notebook and pencil and stay tuned for Learn Arabic at Huda TV. Please, brothers and sisters, in particular brothers, husbands, divorce is the last resort. Even when I was given the topic, the art of divorce, I was thinking, why are we talking about a divorce? As they say in management, do you take serious decisions when you are angry? Mm. No one is taking a very serious decision yes. in his life, yes. maybe in his business, while you are angry. A divorce happens in every six minutes. We are not talking about enjoying the divorce, but we are talking about certain steps. Uh, to be followed in order to avoid divorce or minimize the possibility of divorce or minimize the consequences of divorce. Any divorce taking place have many ill effects. So we would like to minimize those ill effects. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Uh, Brother Abdul Aziz from Nigeria also called uh, regarding mortgages, and it's the same concept that we've dealt with uh, with the Brother Abdul Hakim at the beginning of this episode. Any loan that has interest on top of it is considered to be riba and is forbidden. So whether I give you one dollar and I ask you to pay them at two after a year, after a month, after a week, or I give you a million dollars and ask you to give me a hundred dollars on top of that as an interest. It's considered to be riba. It's one of the major sins of Islam and is forbidden. Whether you want to buy a house by mortgage or you want to lease a car or you want to uh, buy a property or a plot, it's the same ruling. Regarding brother, carry on. Uh, if I recorded his name correctly from Sweden, he's saying that how is it, what's the proper methodology to seeking knowledge? Well, seeking knowledge has to be with someone who's knowledgeable more than you. It is completely, uh, not completely, it's quite difficult to seek knowledge on your own because you need someone to correct you if you make a mistake. And among the me best means of seeking knowledge is to be associated with a sheikh, with a scholar, and you read to him a number of certain books, and he corrects you, and he explains what's hidden between the lines, and he gives you the proper methodology of learning uh, proper knowledge. So you start with the Quran, which is the best book of knowledge, by reading it, by memorizing it, by knowing the interpretation and the commentary of what the companion said about it, of what the Prophet interpreted some of its verses. By doing this, you start to purify your soul. Of course, you need to know Arabic, but if this is quite difficult or impossible, then you have to 
look for another alternative and that is by going through the interpretation by your own language and then learn the hadith learn the fiqh with the imam if this is not possible there are online universities that you can enlist in and you have a proper methodology of studying these books but in a different manner and there would be an interaction with the uh, scholars and etc and uh, this would be uh, one of the best means and there are a lot of of, of d any other ways of course among them is that you should devote a portion of your time of your day two to three hours to reading and asking without asking you cannot learn if you just keep on reading and listening without pondering on it without asking and objecting sheikh why is this why is that what's the reference this is one of the best ways ways of acquiring knowledge hayat from nigeria i think hayat is gone abdullah from nigeria is gone as well okay we move on to uh, sister maryam she asked about the dua al mashhud i don't know this dua al mashhud i have to go and and, and search if there's anything in the books of hadith uh, uh, on this regard but personally i don't know it so i apologize she asked what's the difference between qabli and ba'di qabli means before ba'di means after and this is usually uh, refers to the voluntary prayers which are before the fard prayer as in the case of dhuhr we have four voluntary rak'as before dhuhr itself and after you pray dhuhr you have two voluntary sunnah that is ratiba after so this is qabli and this is Ba'di. Brother uh, Muhammad uh, asked a question about jealousy between the people. And jealousy, it might not be the proper word. The proper word, word would be probably envy. Because jealousy is something that can be positive. I feel jealous if someone talks to my wife or someone talks to my daughter. I feel jealous if my wife goes out exposed or showing some of her flesh or so showing some of her hair or showing her face this is the proper jealousy i would not like my wife to work with other men in mixed environments this is proper je jealousy and it's permissible not only that it is highly recommended in islam so what brother so i think what brother muhammad was talking about is uh, envy we have a, a, a sister Asya from Saudi. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, sister. Uh, uh, Sheikh, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, question number one uh, Is it allowed to take the sweets uh, uh, on the occasion of a birthday? If someone is celebrating birthday mm. uh, and giving the sweets, so we are not celebrating birthday, but uh, they give some chocolates or cake. And question number two, is it allowed to celebrate a wedding anniversary by exchanging gifts, uh, not a throwing party, but exchanging gifts for the spouse or something like this? Okay. Uh, exactly. Uh, Sister Malia from uh, Nigeria. Sister Malia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Yes, sister. I was asking about the first thing that I asked that I had to explain what you said. So, not, what I I'm really asking now is some shakes some really in my country are interpreting the way you are going to repay the past. Some are saying that after one year, if you will pray, you will give food to the needy one. After another one, you will ask another thing again, like maybe another two, two mudu or something. But if so, I want to know, am I going to say the first thing, like normal first thing, like, I will, like the way I wish it without putting something on it, without feeding maybe. And my second question I'm, is... I'm, I'm unable to understand, to I'm unable to understand your first question. About yeah, I mean, somebody asked about the first thing. One of my children, one of my children, uh, one of my scientists, I, I feed it. 
I think to me, the doing Ramadan, so the actually, I think I will not do it, I should see this to another person. So, am I going to do the first week for the other one again? And my first question is, I'm asking on how about, uh, uh, what of the working class mother? What is the aspect of working class mother in Islam? Uh, of what? Or housewife? Of, of murder? Yeah. What is the ruling on murder if someone kills someone? Yeah, like I'm a mother, I want to be going out to work. How, what is the role, the role of teaching? Receive food for my, my husband is able. So, am I going to, going to be working? Is it good for me or is it good? It's better for me to be staying at home. Wallahi, Sister Maria, I'm unable to understand your question. This is my own okay. shortcoming. I'm unable to answer. Okay. You, if you send me an email, and inshallah, I will try my best to uh, uh, attack or uh, actually answer this. Uh, Sister uh, Asia had, okay, uh, Brother Mahmoud from Oman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, I have one question. Yes, brother. Uh, yeah, uh, women wearing hijab, mm -hmm. is it uh, necessary to cover the face entirely in light of Quran and Sunnah? Okay. Second question or one more question only? Only one question. Please. Okay. Zakallah khair, Brother Muhammad. Any more callers? Okay. Um, Sister Asia asked about, she knows that celebrating birthdays is haram in Islam. Because it's not part of our religion, it is coming to us from other religions, other cultures. She's asking about what's the ruling on uh, if someone gives us sweets or sends us a piece of the cake because they celebrated their own birthday, so they're giving gifts uh, uh, away. I believe that as long as you did not participate in that birthday party and you did not congratulate them and you received this food, this birthday was not a religious celebration therefore to me my own opinion is that it is permissible for you to take that birthday but do not fall into the mistake of saying oh jazakallah khair or thank you have a happy birthday no this is not permissible in islam as for marriage anniversaries and she's saying that i know that it is not permissible to celebrate marriage anniversaries but what about exchanging gifts again it is a form of celebration to exchange gifts. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not against at all giving your spouse a gift, but do not choose that particular day. As Muslims, we value, we cherish our wives or our spouses, and we do this throughout the whole year. We don't need a particular occasion or a, a, a celebration or an anniversary to honor them and then the rest of the year we step on their uh, uh, stomachs. This is not the Islamic way. We cherish, we value our spouses and to the best of our abilities. Of course, nobody's perfect. But to designate one day as an anniversary to give a gift or to choose Valentine's Day to give your loved one a gift, all of this is not part of our culture. It's not part of our religion. And the Prophet ﷺ highlighted this by saying, whoever imitates, whoever mimics, whoever copies a people, he would be among them. So if you copy the Jews, you'll be among them. If you copy the Christians, you'll be among them. And these celebrations did not come to us from the Muslims, and hence we are not allowed to do it. Okay, we have Abdullah from Nigeria. I think he's gone. Then Barira. Barira from Nigeria. Barira from Nigeria. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I want to say um, congratulations to all that you are doing in Huda, in both you and Sheikh Salah. May Allah bless all of you and Amen. all the staff in Huda and the Muslims all over the world. Thank Amen. you very much. We Amen. are very happy. And I, it's not a question, but uh, just an advice, if it is going to be possible, you have a lot of uh, um, viewers in Nigeria, 
and we are learning very very much uh, from this blessed channel. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so it's just an advice that if it is going to be possible, I see that you are all having a great difficulty in understanding some of the people when they ask questions due to the language. True. Uh, they, they have the heavy accent of the English. So please bear with us, and if it is possible, uh, to maybe have somebody on standby who can understand that kind of English and then be translating or writing it for you and passing it over. Because we are honestly, be we are honestly benefiting from all these questions and the answers, and we appreciate the fact that you are being so patient, all of you, and bearing with us, and may Allah continue to bless you and to guide all of you and all of us. Yeah. To the end of time, inshallah. Jazak. Jazak. I uh, very highly, I very highly appreciate uh, Sister uh, Barira's uh, suggestion. It's a very valid one, and I hope, inshallah, the management of Huda would do something like that. We value our viewers in Nigeria greatly. We look, inshallah, forward for having the Muslim Ummah in Nigeria following the Quran and Sunnah. And this is extremely important. I do not know what's happening in Nigeria. I have no knowledge. All what I hear is from the CNN and from the BBC about the disturbances, about the killing, about the violence, about the, the bombings, and all of this is not related to my religion as a, as a Muslim. So I don't know who's doing this, and I cannot point a finger and say that there are extremists or because I'm not receiving what's actually happening on the ground. All what I'm hearing is from non-Muslims conveying the news to us. So I can't point any fingers. But I value the people of Nigeria because they are so keen on learning Islam. It's very obvious that the majority of those who are calling from Nigeria, we have to promote Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf. And we have to annihilate we have to defend islam we have to stop those if there are any who are trying to tarnish the reputation of my religion of islam the peaceful religion by giving a bad image about the muslims or by going into means and ways that the prophet Islam forbade and he warned us from following so i hope the management will take this into consideration sister mariam from nigeria Wa alaykum wa alaykum wa rahmatullah. I have very uh, difficulty with the accent. Mr. Mariam, again, calling from Nigeria. Okay. Uh, that other uh, the one I told you is to a mashlul. M-A-S-H-L-U-L. Mashlul. To a mashlul, yes. Okay. There isn't anything in the sunnah. There isn't anything in our sunnah that refers to this dua ul mashlul. Mashlul in Arabic means paralyzed so as if you're telling me that there is a specific dua for those who are paralyzed and there isn't anything of such uh, we go back to brother mahmoud from oman uh, is it no we go to to brother muhammad regarding uh, the issue of envy in islam it is not permissible to have envy i cannot look at your house i cannot look at your um, uh, car, I cannot look at your health and envy you because envy is, is forbidden in Islam. Envy is wishing that all this goodness and blessings and favor of Allah upon you be removed. So if I see a big house and I say, this guy doesn't deserve it, I wish Allah Azza wa makes it burn. If I see a beautiful car, yakhi, the guy didn't have an accident in a whole month. What is this? So I give you my worst of feelings and this is completely forbidden in Islam and it only shows that this person with envy in his heart is a person in distress is a poor person he's sick because he's not appreciating Allah's gifts he's not appreciating Allah's favor upon him and instead he looks at others and look down at himself thinking that he's deprived from Allah's mercy so he has a big problem brother Muhammad from somewhere, um, I think from Saudi, he asked, is there a difference between the a prayer of a man and a woman? And the answer is no. Men and women to, be, to pray alike. Why? 
Because the Prophet said, The women are the sisters of men. So whatever comes in the Quran, instructing them to do it, they have to do it exactly as men. They are equal in the sense that, in, 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 the, terms, in the terms of instructions, they're equal. And their equality is not as people think that men and women are equal. So my wife had few children. She comes to me now and says, listen, from now on, we're equal. You have children. This is not, uh, I'm not going to conceive. So there's no equality. There is fairness and justice. However, in prayer, the Prophet said, pray as you have seen me pray. So we learn how to pray from the hadiths of the companions of the Prophet and they did not differentiate between men and women. So they pray exactly alike. Now, some scholars said that when a woman is praying and people are looking at her, she should not spread her hands when she's prostrating. She should not do certain things because this would expose her body. We don't have any instruction of this in the Quran, in the Sunnah, nor in the companion's hadith. So it is an issue of ishtihad. This is what the Imam thought would be best. So if, yes, if a woman is praying in a place where men are looking at her, she is not uh, instructed or recommended to pray in a form that would draw attention to her. She should conceal herself to the best of her uh, ability. But when she's praying alone or in uh, uh, the middle or in the midst of uh, women, no, she must pray as uh, the Prophet ﷺ instructed her to do so. Brother Mahmoud from Oman, he's asking the same old questions that people have been asking for hundreds of years. What's the ruling on covering uh, a woman's face? The consensus of all scholars of Islam that covering the face is recommended. Let me repeat that. The consensus of all scholars of Islam, they say that covering the face is recommended. You would not find a person coming and say, no, she should uncover. She, except nowadays, those liberals, those uh, secularists who claim to be Muslim, who would come and fight anything that protects women. So they would come, but they're not scholars. They're not people of knowledge. They are nobodies. And a few years times after they die, nobody would even remember them except by cursing them. I'm talking about the great scholars of Islam. They all agree that covering the face is a virtue. It's something recommended. They differed whether it's mandatory or not. And whenever we have a difference of opinion among scholars, we have to do as our manual tells us to do, our Quran. And Allah tells us in the Quran that whenever you have a dispute, you refer back to Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means that refers back to the Quran and to the Sunnah. And if you look at the Quran, you would find that there are certain verses and there are verses that are not certain. So we have to, first of all, choose the certain verses and apply them. And when it comes to hijab or covering the face, we would find that the majority of the evidences in the Quran, they, they direct us to covering the face so that women, as in the verse of 59, Surah Al-Ahzab, that Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ, say to your wives, your daughters, and the believing women, or the women of the believers, the wives of the believers, to lower their jilbab so that they would not be recognized and hence harassed. So one of the two, either women are recognized by their faces, so, so they should cover, so they cannot be harassed. When they covered, people would respect them. You would never find someone harassing a woman that is wearing and covering her body from head to toe. Or it means that those who used to uncover their faces at the time of the Prophet at the time of the Arabs were the concubines and the slaves. So people, bad people, thugs would probably harass them. So Allah Azza instructing the women, the free women to cover so that they would not be mixed up with these uh, uh, slave women or concubines. Any way, as I said, it's an issue of dispute. You do what is safer to you at the sight of Allah. And to me, I believe firmly that covering the face is a must. Whether you are in this country or in, the, in Europe or in the US or in Canada or wherever. 
But if someone, it appeals to him more and he thinks that following the other opinion is correct, this is his choice, he will have to answer uh, to Allah on the day of judgment and Allah Azza wa knows best. This is all the time we have until we meet next time. Fi amalillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Keeping my heart your remembrance and in your